Hey, welcome to the Rock Live podcast. This is a special edition, a uh, rock con edition. Also, my name is Antonio. I'm here with Pastor Jessica and Pastor Dan, and we hello, are so hello. excited to be here with you all. It is a special edition because we are specifically taking this episode to discuss rock con or for our first time ever, our rock church conference. And I'm here with our senior pastors. Hello, guys. Hey, hey, hey how are you? Um, I think it was important. I've had conversations with each of you individually, and I felt it was very important that we sat down for this podcast to really share the heart behind the conference, right? I mean, we know this is not just, I mean, we we know we weren't just looking for something to do. Oh, we no. have enough to do yes. where this is not just another gathering. This is not just another, hey, I think we should do a conference because that's what people are doing. I, there's a lot of intent behind this. And we are finding, as we have been planning and preparing, that God is doing something in our own lives, w within our staff, within our church, uh, as it pertains to leading up to the conference. So I wanted to sit down and talk about, well, why are we having this conference? So I don't know who wants to go first. I think I can, I can address that one. You know, um, The Rock has done events over the decades now, and we've actually just seen how God will impart certain things during those conferences, you know, whether it be a men's conference, a women's conference, young adults. Um, we've done uh, a ton of different things, even one day marriage events and things mm -hmm. like that. We see new people come. We see people get planted in the church. Um, you know, we've seen at those conferences, people get delivered, people get healed. Uh, we've seen marriages, uh, you know, reconciled and different things like that. And so over the years, I mean, I think probably members of our church, if you said, hey, what was the most impacting moment at The Rock? A lot yeah. of times people say, oh, man, that conference when this happened, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, there's some iconic moments in my thinking. Like I remember one time John Bevere was here at a men's conference, and he was uh, preaching the message on breaking intimidation. Mm -hmm. And you probably remember this yeah. because yeah. Uh, the recap video, there's this guy on the front, like literally up against the stage. And when John said, all right, we're going to we're going to, you know, come against that spirit of yeah. intimidation. And I want you to just scream at the top of your lungs on mm -hmm. the count of three. And he, he hits three. And this guy, you can tell, just is like, you know, just yeah. going for it. Yeah. And uh, and I think that was one of those, like, inspiring moments. Like, I know that God was doing something in that guy's life mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. yeah. And and so, you know, when we look at, at why any conference, you know, really we can see what God does, how God builds momentum into the church, mm -hmm. how he imparts something, um, the things that he does in members' lives. So this year, um, you know, Pastor Jess, every year she's like, you know, leading up to her conferences, she's ready to never do it again. And then she, she yeah, has the conference. They're not fun to put on. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, they're, they're a lot like, of work. Oh, they love putting on conferences. Yeah. No. It's a lot of work. It is so. like so much work. Yeah. So she, she laments all the way up to the conference that like, why am I doing this? And no one's signing up. And, you know, what are we doing? And then we have the conference and it's like, oh, that was the most amazing mm -hmm. thing. But, um, but she was praying about the, the, 2024 year and um she had some speakers lined up for 2025 and 2024 she really didn't have anything in her spirit yeah. and um and so we just decided like hey in this space because last year they gave it up for the men mm -hmm. uh their their spot for the yeah conference. we actually had it planned yeah and we were like i i was in prayer you were praying and god and spoke to you about me, that no, like the give men it to the men need to have a conference and so we women served the men last year which was a wonderful men's it was conference. awesome okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. So we um, we switched over this year, and we were praying about it. And in our we we do a year ahead planning every year, and so in our planning time, in our prayer time, um, Pastor Jess was not getting anything about her conference, so she wasn't moving forward. And we just thought, you know, we've we've had this idea for years that it would be great to put on a a whole church conference where everybody gets to have a piece. You know, men have a piece, women have a piece, youth have a piece, children have a piece. Uh, even La Roca has has a piece and things in their own. And, and yeah. uh, we've thrown in this year uh, business leaders. You know, that's kind of a new thing that we've done mm -hmm. as an aspect of the breakouts. But we've had this dream for a long time. And it's just never panned out because we've always had either the women's conference, the men's conference, um, even missions, things that we've done. Right. Uh, we we host the ISOM regional conference. We'll be doing that again in 2025. But um but, you know, it, w it was always kind of like, no, we're not, uh, no, we don't want to do that. Or, you know, the women had a really strong vision for the year. Or God was speaking about something. This year, though, it just felt like we had that peace, like this is, this is what we want to do. This is where we want to go. This is, this is an opportunity for the whole church to gather. We've never done anything like this before. Um, and, and really the, you know, the idea behind it is just sitting under the, the word, 
just allowing God to impart grace. You know, this is the year of grace. We're, mm-hmm. we're talking about shouts of grace, grace, grace to it, you know, and, and uh, you know, just doubling down like like we see in the Word. Anytime something is is double emphasized, we know that, that God is multiplying. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I just can see us gathering together as a, as a body of believers, you know, and, and sitting under the teaching of the Word just allowing God to double down on the things that he's already started this year and to really project us into the future. I know I'm kind of getting ahead in in some things, but, but you know, that's really the vision of it is, is really allowing the word uh, to be the leader in this sense that, that it's seeds that are sown, it's grace impartations, it's God moments, Mm -hmm. you know, um, they're actually extending praise and worship. Mm-hmm. Uh, they want to just have some God moments, some God time where we just worship, you know, and just allow the Spirit of God to move. Um, you know, I'm I'm believing God. We're we're praying, we're fasting, we're doing some different stuff. Um, you guys are praying Wednesdays, yep. and uh, we're just believing God for some some God moments. You know, yep. we're we're like, I mean, the agenda is just yep. tossed aside where we just have to pause in the holiness and in the the moment that God arrests us, you yep. know, and really just takes over. And so I'm excited, you know. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. And and there's there's almost that um, that excitement of the unknown, you know. It's like if you if you said, "What do you want God to do specifically?" I couldn't really tell you specifics of like. I just know God wants to do something. Yeah. I don't. I can't put my finger on what mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. but I think that's that's good because it's varied per individual. Yep. You know, we could have thousands of people in the yep. room, and God can touch each one yep. in a personal individual way i believe callings are going to be Amen. you know distributed gifts yeah. are going to be given um yeah. you know spiritual insight and uh, deliverance healing physical healing you know emotional healing all that kind of stuff I, I just i just feel it when in my prayer time you know like god wants to do a ton of stuff yeah. you know but we have to give him the opportunity and that's really what the the reasoning behind this is let's just give god, god an opportunity right. through you know, times in His presence, times in the Word, um, just allowing that washing to come over us and just see what God does. Yeah. yeah. You know, conferences are, um, they're a lot of work, yes. They're, um, what people probably don't know is how demonically attacked we get when we do something like a conference. Um, as far as our staff and us and just like like Dan was saying, the reason I would always be like, I don't, why am I doing this yeah. is because I didn't know if people were going to show up and we're doing all this work. We're putting in all this time and this effort. And then are they even going to come? Mm-hmm. And so to understand the value of what this is. So like I pay like $280 or whatever for a camp for one of my children yeah. in the summertime. Why? I would pay that. I would pay $500 right. for that because why? Because when my kids get off that mountain, yeah, there's a God breathed like newness in their mm-hmm. spirit, man, that they need to continue on in that year right. for school or with all the junk that they're going to be in, inundated with. And so um, you can't put a price on what God does. And yeah. then they're they're set apart during that time, you know, away from like their culture away from their phones but they're in this god bubble yeah. in a way and um one of me and uh, pastor brian were on the front row the other day and we're like camp is like like a ad- conference is adult camp mm-hmm. that's what this yeah. is, this, is our this, turn. Is, yeah. this is our camp like right. we always have to work we always have to take care of like everything in life but this is our time set aside to place a value on okay god yeah like i need you to speak i i need to hear my direction for the next season of my life i need to find what it is that you have for me and my family Mm -hmm. you know whether you're a man or a woman or single or married or whatever you know i think about all aspects of what we're doing here and this has been a hard one pastor antonio because you kind of inherited all the responsibility (laughs) of it later on in the planning of it and then I jumped in like, hey, I used to do every event around here. I probably need to jump in and help yeah, you. Yeah, so it's yeah. been a little bit of a like, yeah. like yeah. our timing <laughs> has not been yeah. what we would have wanted it to be. But I know that like God doesn't operate on our agendas mm-hmm. and on our time. And yeah. so I do feel the same that there's going to be something happening. I just don't know what. Yeah. yeah. And so there's this expectation that I have. But I feel like, you know, if I could tell anybody, I, every conference I go to, 
it is a pain in the butt to get to mm -hmm. there. Can yeah. I be real? Like, right. I have to leave my kids. I have to leave my husband. Yeah. I have to. It's usually women's conferences. Right. Um, and I do. I used to go to pastors one with you, and yeah. it was a lot. Like, yeah. you have to prepare like everything you need to so that you can go. Yeah. And um, and the reality is, is once you get there, though, you have like now you're in this mindset of like I'm here to receive. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is my time. Yeah. And I mean, there were moments in conferences that I've been in that like God spoke, God breathed things mm -hmm. that I wasn't getting just on the regular Sunday morning yeah. because I still had to go take my kids and I still had to go do my job. I still, you know what yep. I mean? This I'm praying will be that God moment for people where yep. they come and they sit and they start talking you know, to each other and they get a word or they're sitting in worship and God just drops a revelation yeah. about their business on them or yeah. about their marriage or about their, you know, maybe there needs to be some correction in our lives. And God, because we're in this moment, God's going, Hey, you need to get these things in line. Yeah. Like these things have been out of order for a while. Um, but with that correction always comes love and a plan on how to do that. And so I believe that this conference is going to be pivotal for any believer that will give it time yeah. and come to it. Right. And it's not even that long. Like I've been to conferences that are like four days long and that's, a, that's a plan. You really yeah. got to plan that out. Yeah. But, um, in fact, my nail lady was telling me she's going to Thailand for like some like conference that's like two weeks long. And I'm like, oh. what are you doing? She's like, we just meditate and in a room. And I'm like, wow, I wish Christians would take that <laughs> much time <laughs> to go and just, we need to give God a little bit more yeah. and we need to pause our lives and we need to make time for God. Yeah. And we need to invest and pay for it. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and people are like, well, why do you pay for it? Well, you know, those speakers aren't free right. and the food that everybody eats isn't free. I don't think people get that. Like right. no free lunch. There's yeah. no free nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's free is the power of God yeah. and the spirit of God. And, yeah. and, and that I believe is going to be what God is going to show up. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're setting the table. We're doing our due diligence. Right. And yet then we're just waiting yeah. on God because the one thing about the rock is we're so spirit led. This isn't like a, you know, uh, self-help church. This right. isn't like a, this is what the, the plan of, you know, whatever. And I'm, I all listen to pastors. I mean, we were just sat down with somebody at a, at a volleyball game recently and they were strategizing how yeah. to do certain things in, with Dan. And I'm just sitting there listening like, yeah. okay, but what about the Holy spirit? Like he could change your plan yeah. any second. And I feel like that's this conference because he's changed our plans right. so much, right. you know? And, um, and then, for our church, how unique we are. We are a, if people don't know, we are a multicultural, multi-generational, mm -hmm. multi-social class church. Yeah, yeah. Like we have homeless sitting with business owners in yeah. our services with yeah. doctors and lawyers. Yeah. Um, we have black, white, mm -hmm. you know, Pacific Islander. Yeah. We have, um, gosh, everything. Latino. I mean, Latino. Latino. Yeah. For sure, hundred percent. Well, and when we, because because it's, it's amazing. Like, it's when you say multi-ethnic, like no, like not just because we have one of each. <laughs> no, like, it's for real. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I love our church for that yeah. reason. Like, I know I've been to some yeah. churches where we're like we're totally multicultural, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, okay, yeah. you have like a few people here, you know. No, like, a absolutely. <laughs> but we're Southern California, mm -hmm. you know, and, and melting pot. inland yeah. Southern yeah. California, so. We are unique, and so for to plan this thing has been very unique because we were looking at it, and it was funny because I do think that the men mm -hmm. started planning all of this, and it looked like a men's conference. In yeah. fact, we had women walking through the back door going, so is this just for guys? And we're going, why would we they think that? Enough, you, know? Enough, I guess. you know, and <laughs> I, I think the other thing, too, is, is that uh, I know early on in the planning, they were looking for uh, female speakers, mm -hmm. and for some reason they're hard to get they're very hard to get very hard to it, get. it's just kind of crazy and and i get it you know there were some that uh, were very polite and they were like we would be there but our conference is the same weekend yeah. and so we understood that but i mean some of them it was just like we had to go through like fort knox yeah. to get anyone to come to like that's yeah. ridiculous i'm like we're the body of christ we yeah. act like the world so like th I, it is it is hard to mm -hmm. get speakers and yeah. And then, you know, we had some lined up and just tragedy happened in their lives and they couldn't mm -hmm. come. And so, like, there's just, like, a lot. So, honestly, I feel like whoever's coming, it it is going to be exactly who needs to be here. Yeah. yeah. And we have a great lineup of yeah. speakers. I mean, really, we I don't know if you want to talk about some of the speakers that are coming. Yeah. Well, speaking of women speakers, you've had Zyda at the women's conference She's before, amazing. right? She's awesome. Yeah. She's and a mighty woman of God. Yeah. She's been a pastor 
I don't even know how long, forever. And well, I did, so five years ago, I did their 13-year anniversary okay. service at their church. So that's 18 years. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure before that. Probably more than yeah. that. But yeah, Iglesia Doral Jesus Worship Center in Miami. Yeah. Pastor Frank and Zida. And, and they're just awesome. The and most she amazing does, people you'll ever meet. She does a women's conference. It's in Spanish, mm-hmm. um, but it's called Erifica, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and just, it's wonderful. yeah, I mean, thousands of ladies yeah. over the years been impacted. Yep. Um, and, uh, and just a, a dynamic woman of God. And, but I mean, like her and Frank are like the most huggable people on the planet. I mean, outside of Pastor Antonio, you know, so, <laughs> but, but like Frank is just such a man of God. Oh, he's like a stable, sturdy, yeah. like when you're in his presence, you're like, I'm safe. He's just this tall you know? Cuban yeah. man that just makes you feel like, yeah. you know, yeah. you're and the most special person. Wisdom. Yeah, he's great. Same with Zyda, full of wisdom. I just love being with them. So I'm excited about them coming. Quick story <laughs> about Frank. Uh, you know, anybody who's listened to Pastor Jim preach probably has heard this story back in the day. But um, Frank had a guy in his church that was a boxer. And um, so the the Pacquiao fight, the, this boxer in Frank's church was going to, uh, he was going to fight first. And then Pacquiao was going to come up. Yeah. And uh, and so Pastor Jim was with Frank. And they went up, uh, they were going to go watch the fight live. And, uh, and so Frank was like, will you come and pray for my, my church member, you know? And, and so this guy, he didn't speak any English, but Pastor Jim started praying for him. He said they had a Pentecostal experience. <laughs> the guy's jumping up and down, uh, yeah. you know, just going for it. So then um, they said, well, hey, do you want to pray for Pacquiao? And he's like, yeah, let me go pray for him. You know, so they were going up to pray for him. But I guess there was a politician that came in to greet uh, him. Yeah. And so they're like, we're so sorry you can't come in right now. So he never got to pray for Pacquiao. Well, the member of Frank's church won the fight. Pacquiao lost. Oh, man. <laughs> Should have had Pastor Jim pray. So anyways, yeah. what was funny was we're, <laughs> we're at a Wednesday night church service. The fight was on a Wednesday night. Yeah. So he took off that Wednesday night to go to the fight with Frank. And, uh, and so... Um, they're going through this dark tunnel and Pastor Jim, you know, he's at the time in his 60s and he's like looking and he's like, oh, it's so dark in here. And Frank goes here and he holds his hand <laughs> and walks him out. My dad is like a man's man. I mean, this like, you think about like it, he's like John Wayne. Wayne. Yeah. yeah. And, and so Frank holds his hand and walks him out of this dark tunnel. But the crazy thing was <laughs> during the church service, my phone starts buzzing. Yeah. I start getting these text messages. And it's like people that are at home that skipped church to watch the fight, you know, and they're watching the pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. And so they're showing uh, this member of Frank's church walking out of the tunnel. Well, here's yeah. Frank and Pastor Jim yeah. behind him wearing the, you know, the, the suit, the full body suit and all that kind of stuff, yeah. the, the sweat outfit. And, uh, and so they're coming out, they're on TV, and they're like, is my pastor at the fight? Well, I remember seeing, and you see kind of Pastor Jim's kind of... He's got his arm you, up, like he's pissed know, you, up. You like, walk, yeah. They're walking in, like the music's going. Yeah. And like, you're, I mean, he's Well, and he's if you know my immersed. dad's history, my grandfather was a lightweight boxing champion. Yeah. So my dad loved yeah. boxing. I always well, thought well that's actually boxing. where the name Cobra came from. Yes. Is because they were Nucci. Yeah, that's our last name. Real yeah. last name is Nucci. But there was a lot of prejudice against Italians uh, back in that Tons. day. Yeah. And and so he was in the Army. He was mm-hmm. 16 years old, right? Yeah. He, back in the day, I guess you could lie to the Army and they didn't check your paper. <laughs> lied about his age. <laughs> so he was an immigrant, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And he came over. He only spoke um, Italian. And, and he... Um, he learned the language. He actually grew up in the Redwood Forest with oh, my wow. uncle yeah. and, like, took care of the forest. He would sleep well, in the forest. That'd be your great, great uncle. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Uncle. Great, great. Yeah. yeah. And um, and so my grandfather was, like, uh, liked boxing. So he went into the Army at Scruffle Barracks over in yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. And he was 16 years old, but he was actually said he was 18, but he wasn't. And so he became a lightweight boxing champion. But he and, was Rudy Cobra. But Nucci was not like a, yeah. a good last name, you know. And so he named it himself Cobra, Rudolph Cobra. And then he met my Nana, yeah. who was this tall, like, <laughs> bottleneck, you know, yeah. redhead. Yeah. And he was like, I'm going to marry her. And she's like, ew, no, you're too short. And... Um, so um, he finally <laughs> won her over, and she was like, "If I marry you, Cobra is not, or Cobra will not be our last name. Right. We're putting an E on the end of it, and we're making it Cobra." So anybody who's Cobra, yeah. 
obviously related yeah, to me because it's no a other, made up name. Yeah. So people think we're French. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, it is That's actually, awesome. it sounds it's French, amazing so to me though that in America, yeah. you could just make up whatever you wanted to at that time yeah. and like just well, change a lot of people name. have different last name or iterations of their yeah. last name that they changed. Mm -hmm. uh, what's that island or in, in Ellis New Island? Ellis yeah. Island, they, they changed kind of, a lot yeah. of it. Yeah, they just yeah, they did. Or the officials changed them. Like, yep. oh, I don't like that. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would shorten <laughs> names or they would, you yeah. know, America. Isn't yours, isn't Roth? Roth. Isn't it? Roth means red in German. Okay. So I don't know, like, there's been a lot of talk, right. especially amongst the Cobras. Right. Uh, a lot of them think that I'm Jewish. Well, mm. look at him. What's, <laughs> like... I mean, the church thinks I'm yeah. Latino. Yeah, Some yeah. of them think I'm Middle right. Eastern, yeah. you know. Especially when you hear Moreno Valley. Moreno <laughs> Valley. <laughs> I always joke that the, uh, the Latinos like the way I say tortilla. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I, mean, I mean, one of our ushers came in, he's like, Pastor, you have a tongue for Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm a Heinz 57. Yeah, we got yeah. about everything, uh, you know, in there. And, you know, when we look back, um, I can trace a lot of the stuff, but I, I don't know about the Jewish. Yeah. Now, in Germany, obviously, there was a lot of German obviously Jews. Obviously, the Holocaust. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that went on there. And Roth, you know, Roth's child, mm -hmm. that sort of thing is a German name. But um, I don't know because... Uh, when I went to Germany, we went to Rotenburg, which is R O T H E N B U R G. Oh. You know, so, so it could I mean, have been or it, it could have been well, a part and of. And then we have like some German people that have but now recently become a part of our church. And I literally was looking across the sanctuary last week and I was like, Dan looks like his brother. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh Wait. my gosh. Maybe he really that's is awesome. German. We could be brothers. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. Well, you so that's know. that. How did we get on Frank, this subject? Frank. <laughs> Frank Lopez, yeah. Frank, Frank and Lopez. Zida. Wonderful oh people, gosh. wonderful pastors. We got Jabin coming. Jabin Chavez. Jabin Chavez, he's City the Lights best. Church. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, he's just wonderful, man. I, I tell Such you. Such a wonderful pastor. I smile when I hear his mm -hmm. preaching clips on the on the yeah. videos that, yeah. that we have just because I, I just love the guy. Yeah. Story about Jabin. Yeah. Okay. This might make it into the the conference when we introduce him. But uh, first time I met Jabin, I think you were having him at Young Adults yeah. or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. It was a Friday night. Yep. You had him in our, our pastor's lounge. And so uh, I was coming that night and they said, do you want to go meet Jabin? I said, yeah, let's go meet him. You know, so I come in and I walk into the lounge and Jabin is sitting on the couch. He's got the little coffee table in front of him. He's leaning over, getting a drink or something like that. And he looks up at me and this was eight years ago. Uh -huh. So I had, you know, a goatee, yeah. but it didn't connect. Like I think in eight <laughs> years somehow, I don't know if I've just matured it's enough. It's very hard for Dan to grow up <laughs> facial hair. Yeah. So same. yeah, no, the no, sides no don't, don't. Yeah, I see you shaved <laughs> finally. So, but at the time it was just kind of I call it the Errol Flynn. If anybody yeah. remembers the old Robin Hood, you know, oh, back yes. in the day. Um, but Jabin looks at me and his mind just goes somewhere else and he's like, ooh, ooh, um, um, okay, uh, the guy from the movie, um, Tombstone, uh, uh, oh, and I'm yes. like. <laughs> what is going yeah val kilmer doc holiday right as as I, as, oh my gosh i see it now. yeah now you see <laughs> it right i just need the big long black hat i'll be your huckleberry yeah. oh my yeah God. i mean oh, oh God. man tombstone yeah crack oh, me up hilarious. but yeah javen we were we were so blessed to support him when he started city light church in mm -hmm. in vegas he sent us um his support letter and that sort of a thing. And he's just been going strong. He's actually building a building right now. I'm excited for him. Yeah, no, I mean, some great things are ahead of him. I just uh, saw a post that they were, they're going to have to go to four church services. They woo. had a line going out the building to him. get into Praise church God. service. That's awesome. So they People are need Jesus. three full services. Praise and the Lord. They have to go to four. Yeah, That's he told so me, cool. he told me, because I asked him about the building, he said it can't come soon enough, you know, just because, I, I mean, they're out of space. Yep. So that's yeah. that's great. Good problems to have. We have, yeah. Ju yeah. We have Julian Lowe coming. Yes. yes. Julian took over at Oasis Church. Mm -hmm. It was Philip and Holly Wagner. A lot of people know Love the them. Wagners are just yep. wonderful, wonderful pastors for yeah. decades. They handed that church over to Julian, and he's just been killing it, man. Yeah. They've been doing such a great job. A uh, little aside about Julian, since we're going into all this stuff. Julian is an avid golfer, mm -hmm. so I haven't played with him yet, but yeah. uh, maybe oh. someday he can teach me how to play golf. So. And he's an SB native. SB native, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think he's going to probably talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he gets to come back to his hood. Yeah. Back to the hometown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hometown. That's really exciting. And uh, he, he was excited, right, to come and preach mm -hmm. the sermon. Absolutely. You know? um, we have Jeff Osborne coming back. Jeff's a, a Rock Church favorite. <laughs> yep. We just love that guy. Yeah. He's going to so. be leading our, our business leaders. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, the cool thing about you you'd mentioned the business leader breakout session. This is our first time doing something like this, but it's going to be set apart for people who already own businesses mm -hmm. or want information. Jeff speaks to business uh, uh, leaders in all spectrums of industry. 
Uh, and so he has he, a couple businesses, yeah, right? Yes. Like, yeah. He does have a great donut shop. Right. In he does. Chino. In Chino. In Chino. Yes. They're ama- so Chino? he owns Chino. businesses and he coaches so business leaders. And so we're excited. Have, and then he's going to minister in the youth because there is some youth uh, sessions. Yes. Yep. He has quite a testimony. So it'll bless them. Yep. And then dun, 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 Sammy Rodriguez is coming. Yeah. yeah. Just love that guy. Mm-hmm. I've been following his ministry for a long time. And uh, I've been sharing with Pastor Jess. I, I've been wanting him to come. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it just... I don't know why. You know, it's just God. It's God's timing, yeah. obviously. Well, it's hard to get some of, you know, guest speakers. They're just. So I don't busy know that we've ever even reached out, though. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing is, right. is that like he probably would have came. Yeah. You know, we and just don't have a lot of guest speakers. Oh. We do. Yeah. Why you guys say that? Because <laughs> we just strike don't have it from a the podcast. <laughs> we don't have a lot of events. What are like, you talking about? We're an event-driven <laughs> church. I mean, I don't know who let this girl <laughs> in. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I, th- I see what you're you saying. Maybe a, saying? Lot of, like, yes. a lot of a lot of newer because yeah. we have a lot of people who are returning. Who guests. are returning? We do. And yes. We do have like our own kind of like after a while, right? They yeah, feel group like, oh, of people. Yeah. Family. Yeah. I mean, I would say Jeff is kind of newer. Yes. Even though I've known Jeff for a long time, yeah, he's and not part of the family. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff is family now. So, yeah. mm-hmm. but no, Sammy. Um, I'm excited to have him come. He's got a great church up in Northern California, Sacramento area, and um, but he's been a part of like the um, Latino evangelical. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm saying the National them. Hispanic Leadership Caucus or yeah, something. Yeah, wow. I mean he's yeah, yeah. he's yeah he's been the president. Yeah, and he's been doing that for a long time. I know that he was a, a part time. of the um, uh, in Los Angeles. They had the Urban Youth Workers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Stuff that they were yeah. doing for a long time, he was he was ministering at that, and and that's how far back that goes. It was when you know Sammy had shoulder length hair mm-hmm. at that time. You wow. know, yes, so, I remember that. Yeah, you yeah. remember. So, yeah. um, but a lot of people, you know, uh, learned who he was when he prayed at Trump's inauguration, mm-hmm. and uh, started following his ministry. Um, the guy is prophetic. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been in meetings where mm-hmm. he's been at. Yeah. In fact, he uh, the first year again back eight years ago. Yeah. First year I was a senior pastor. I went to a conference up in Northern California. And the whole time I was there, I was like, God, why am I here? You know, it was good stuff, good yeah. content and, you know, that sort of a thing. But I mean, really, like I could have probably read the book or I probably could have, mm-hmm. you know, just listened online or, or you know, whatever. And so, so us pastors have those thoughts, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, everybody listening we, probably has those thoughts. We have well. like, yeah. what is going on? Sammy preached. A, I mean, he brought a word. Yeah. And uh, we did communion, and I remember by the end of that service, I was in tears. I was like, "Okay, God, I know yeah. why I was. I needed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I needed that reassurance. I needed that. You but know, it's that God moment at the exa- conference that, like, exactly. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what we're believing God for. I think Friday night with Sammy, we're gonna have some of those moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he's gonna preach, prophesy, yeah. and we're gonna just have some of those those insane, like, do you remember when, yeah. you know, type moments. Yeah. Friday night with I him. I want to point out one more thing though. With conference, you are at this event for two days, and then we we move ours into Sunday. Mm-hmm. So Frank and Zeta will still be with They'll us. They'll be preaching on Sunday Sundays. mornings, yeah. Um, and you are in a group of people that are like believers. Mm-hmm. They're like faith, and yeah. so there's a faith that arises amongst mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. congregation yeah. that are all there for the same purpose, the same reason. Yeah. And I believe that when faith is built up, the power of God can move. Yeah. And so when you put yourself in that position mm-hmm. to be in that atmosphere. You're going to receive something, but you will also receive friendship. So right now we're living in such a dark world. Um, believers are getting saved, but they're still keeping their same friends or still have to be around their same family members yeah. that are unsaved. And they're going, I'm feeling like, like, how do I find friends? And especially I think social media has taught us to not actually have real friends, like where we look each other in the eyes and we have real conversations and we see how we've made each other feel, right? You're now going to sit next to someone. You're going Mm -hmm. to have lunch Mm -hmm. around people. You're going to be able to be in workshops with people. You're going to meet people. And so I would say to everybody who is coming, put yourself out there a little bit. Introduce yourself to someone because this is our church. This is our community. And when the world gets darker and darker, we're going to need each other. Right. We're going to need each other to build each other up. We're going to yeah. need each other to like encourage each other and know I'm not alone in this, but we're in this together, right. you know? And yeah. we just may have some uh, pre-conference and in-between session mixers and things like that. Yeah. So we, you know, for the introvert that doesn't want that, we may. <laughs> well, you know, the, the stage has been set. There's the expectation, but like we've been saying, there's the investment that needs to be done on on your part and that's yeah. why we're encouraging you to set aside the time come with the expectation that you know it might not be any one specific session or 
it, it's like it could be the last session on the last day. For me, it's always that, that it's, way. It just deposits, it, it drops. It is for you, yeah. Because you have to move aside of all the thoughts of what else you could be doing. We almost had to detox yeah, what your you life. you sacrificed yeah. to get here, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, oh man, I didn't. This wasn't the lunch I wanted. This, you know, it took long to get in the parking lot. Whatever the kids things were that you have it to hard exactly. Today. <laughs> but God shows up in powerful ways, and that's why we continue to have this. And I remember uh, one of the things that sparked even this podcast, Pastor Jess, was when you talked about how we we want to equip and strengthen yes. our church. Yeah, and yes. we're believing that after this conference. So yeah, we're gonna have an amazing time in these in these few days and set aside. But something, it's going to ignite something within us because mm-hmm. we don't want to be weak Christians. I think no. that was the target word that you had said that really stuck out. We don't we don't want to be weak be. Christians. We can't be weak Christians for what God is calling uh, our, our local church. And we believe our region mm-hmm. and, and believers all over is to stand up and be strong in our like faith. Be real Christians. Uh, and, to, yeah. and to exactly yeah. not not just go through the motions of mm-hmm. church, um, because the reality is. There are lost and dying people yes. that are looking for someone that would tell them. Yes. They Whenever want I the get truth. to tell somebody about Jesus, they're almost in sh- like, yeah, you know, that's what I need. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. But oftentimes, I, myself included, I, I get either too shy all of a sudden, or, or you know, well, you know, I, you know, I, I can make excuses for why it's to not share my faith, or even just, even if I'm not going to go evangelize, you know, and do an altar call. But just tell somebody about the goodness of God or, or bless somebody in but a just way. Just being a Christian is that. Mm-hmm. But I just don't know if people put an investment into building ourselves up in our Christian faith and yeah. our Christian walk as much as we do other things. Yeah. And this is that investment. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about my son. Brag on him a bit. He ha- He's a part of a football team. And if any parent out there knows, football like takes every inch of your time. Yeah. And... Um, there was like a mess up with some of the scheduling. They were going to have to pop in a, it was his bye week. So he mm-hmm. got to be off on the yeah. same week that he was going to come to conference. And we were so grateful um, because we were like, you wouldn't be going to that football game <laughs> if you were um, going to. And his coach then tried to say, well, we're going to throw in another game because th- somebody had to cancel on us on another time. And he, he looked at his coach and he said, I'm so sorry, but I already made a commitment and I won't be able to make it because I have to, God comes first. And, and then he had another commitment after the conference too. And so I thought to myself, you know, probably other people would hate that, Mm -hmm. that he did that, but what he was doing for himself and what he was doing to his coach was God comes first. Now he goes to a school. So I think it kind of challenged the coach a bit and all the other players were like, yeah, we're busy too. And so like, they didn't end up having the game, (laughs) game. (laughs) but the reality is, is like we put football in front mm-hmm. of God. We put our kids soccer game mm-hmm. in front of God. We put all and it's like, no, pause. Yeah. Like, let them know, because that right there saying I have something that I'm committed to at church mm-hmm. says something to the team. Right. Well, it says something to the coaches. It says something to the players and they can be like, oh, you're not a team player. No, God comes first before us. Right. And that is what you're saying. And I think that, that these are the things that speak about our Christian life. Even the value people put on it. You know, yeah. uh, recently, you know, uh, some family members and some friends went to a concert. And nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, how much do you, do people put value on seeing that band? Well, mm-hmm. they make they plan for that. Oh, right. man. Yeah. They, yeah. they get the tickets early. Right. They're, you know, p- paying for parking, yeah. all that yeah, kind absolutely. of stuff. Nothing and, wrong with it. And right. then when we have a church conference, it's like, oh, I don't, oh, I don't, I don't know. know. You know, but it's like. It's like they're waiting to see w- if something better comes along. Right. And yeah. I'm like, well, you know, if that's how you're going to treat God. Yeah. I loved what you said this weekend. The measure that you put in is yeah. the measure you get out. How you know, you how you treat God, God is how he'll treat you. you. Well, I want to answer that that question because, you know, we, we alluded to a little bit earlier. But some people, they don't know what to expect. We've had men's conferences. Mm-hmm. We've had women's conferences. We've never really had this all yeah, church. Yeah, this is new. Yeah. So th- there's not really that thing to lean on, right? Like, so w- we know that with men's conference, you're going to get this, like, macho time. We know with women's conferences, mm-hmm. you're going to get – you know, these amazing times, whether it be the kiss goodbye or the things yeah. that are, are yeah. part of the traditions of each of these events. Um, but maybe we can really quickly sure. speak into that part of just what we're going to expect to come and see and experience. You know, I think one of the delightful things is, is that with Rock Con, we can take Rock Church and we can almost amplify it. You know, so the things that we love and enjoy about the Rock Church, I think at the conference are going to be like the highlight you know um there's some some great things 
that take place at this house. And so I know that we've got our team that's planning some things, uh, the breakout sessions for sure. Some yeah. of the some of the core values of the rock are going to be even, uh, you know, gone into in depth. Mm -hmm. um, there's and, and and I think that's where like with the men's conference stuff, definitely we're going to bring in that macho manly, you know, yeah. like you have an aspect feel. of that, yeah. Yeah. What's that? You'll have an aspect. Oh, of for that. sure. Yeah. I mean, beyond just the graphics that went. A little manly, you know, with the black <laughs> right. and orange and all that kind of stuff. But but I've had men at my women's conferences. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So women receive from but, men. But I know when they do the breakouts for the women and when they do the sessions for the youth and things like that, even just the, the things surrounding that, you're going to get those elements of what each unique piece is. Yep. And then the cool thing is we're going to come together from those unique perspectives and we're going to have those sessions together where all of us mm – -hmm. And, and I think that's the aspect of, you know, yeah. uh, even if you're a single person, the aspect of family, that you're a part of something. Yep, you're a part good. of this great big congregation. Mm -hmm. the, these are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. These, this is, you know, our Father God well, we is coming to be with us. We have the children's ministries doing a conference Absolutely. Yeah, they're the doing kids. kids con. Like, so the amazing. children are having their own. The youth are having their own mm -hmm. stuff going on, and then yep. they'll be joining. And us. they're they're having like Nerf battles yeah. and some different stuff yeah. going on, you know, mm -hmm. that some of the adults might want to sneak yeah. into, you know. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be some yeah. of those fun, uh, just unique aspects that all of us can say, "Hey, I, man, RockCon was uniquely rock," you know. And and I'm looking forward to it if they ever do that again. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Yeah. I think we're gonna have fun too. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we've been like so serious. Like the world is so. Dun, dun, yeah. right yeah. now you know Especially like these it, past it's four years. Just yeah. so yeah. not fun <laughs> and um but i do think like i was just in one of the rehearsals on thursday and really we are having fun yes. it's gonna be fun we're it gonna is. we are going to have some fun aspects so yeah. i think it's gonna be a roller coaster yeah. of just um a whimsical time with the holy spirit mm -hmm. i don't know how else to say yeah. that but i, like I do that believe that god wants to bring some supernatural into our very normal natural world and it's going to be a ride yep. so you don't want to miss it yeah, yeah love it good stuff all right guys well you heard it here get connected get registered we will see you at rock con september 13th 14th and even into sunday love you guys we'll see you there